27 days ago, as of the writing of this video, I had published a somber but mostly optimistic video discussing Kaneko's statements regarding him leaving the creative development at Atlas to the younger, not by much, staff that were currently employed at Atlas. I wax poetic about how this is truly a nice and wholesome way for him to go out with style and grace. I have long been a fan of Cosmo Kaneko, and his artistic journey of discovery through expressing his love of classical masters of the craft to masters of comic media or artistic media such as high fashion, I kind of love it all. So when the series of art books, Cosmo Kaneko works, first came onto my radar, I was very eager to own them all. And now I have them all. And even though that seems like an accomplishment that I'm bragging about, I thought I'd make this video explaining why. Despite the fact that they feature art and content from an artist I greatly admire, I don't really think they're worth owning. But let's talk about it. So Cosmo Kaneko Works, or Kaneko Works as I'm just going to call it for brevity, is a series of Cosmo Kaneko art books. Now this isn't the first time Kaneko had art printed in book form, but this is the longest running and most expansive book series he's had to date. First released in 2004, published by Shiki Gensha, the initial plan was to release a book every three months, but they were using this expensive and laborious technique of printing called hexachrome printing. This is a printing style that was developed by Pantone, which is the company that basically dominates the printing market, which adds to the standardized color matching system they already employ. Hexagone printing adds to the CMYK printing method, or cyan, magenta, yellow, and key, by adding orange and green. It is basically used to match colors as close to the original as intended, a goal that's very much appreciated in any art book. This was later discontinued in 2008, but at the time, it just took longer to produce due to the time-intensive nature of the process. So instead of the one book every three months that they originally discussed, they decided to move that to a timetable of one volume every two years. The books feature commentary by Nobuaki Kenbei, a game designer who dominated the TRPG card game strategy guide scene in Japan for quite some time. And he also worked on Gaiden Tensei. So as I said, the first volume was released in 2004. This featured Shin Megami Tensei 1 art from the Super Nintendo era. This is the era of Kaneko art where he used markers. It featured a collage poster of Demon Sprite art and a small interview with Cosmo Kaneko himself, ending with a promo for the next book. That's basically how the first three volumes went, more or less. SMT2 was in volume two, Sprite poster, interview. Kaneko Works 3 had Nocturne art, but it also had SMT1 and 2 updated art for the PSX releases and the Shin Megami Tensei 9 art, and more of the same, the interview and poster, and a promise that Devil Summoner was going to be in the next book. Among the things mentioned in the interviews were things like the idea of having a 10 volume series and that each volume would have a new Kaneko art piece that would eventually connect with the previous and the latter to form an elaborate piece of Kaneko art. Well, a long time passed, nine years to be exact, between the release of Kaneko Works 3 and the next volume. So much time that many people consider that this might be a series that got canceled. But in 2017, the series continued with Volume 4 featuring the promised Devil Summoner art. Later that year, we got Volume 5, which compiled the remaining Devil Summoner art that wasn't featured in Volume 4. Sometime around then, we also got reprints of Volumes 1 through 3. On November 23rd, 2018, we got two volumes at once. They were both Soul Hackers art. In November 2019, we got Kaneko's Persona art in a book. In October of 2020, we got Raido, Strange Journey, Digital Devil Saga, Mock and X, Mock and Chow. And finally, Volume 10 was released in July of 2021. This final book was different. Previous books were simply the art drawn by Kaneko that we can readily find on the Mega 10 Wikia. It's the demon art and the character art. On a white page, the name of said demon or character in English and Japanese, sometimes misspelled, and a description of the demon or character in the back of the book. Volume 10, however, featured game cover art and manual cover art, and some just promotional art for Shin Megami Tensei, Devil Summoner, Makin, Digital Devil Saga, and Persona. And uh, that would normally be the end of this video because there's no more history, right? Well. I want to talk about why I wouldn't recommend this series, or specifically the final volume. 
So the reason I'm making this video isn't because I'm glad that we got all 10 volumes. Earlier I mentioned the books featured different original cover art and all were meant to connect. This is actually true of the first three volumes. But after those, we stopped getting interviews with Kaneko, we stopped getting posters as bonuses, and we also stopped getting new cover art. Instead, we got collages. The paper quality changed as well. And before we go forward, I do want to mention that I used to be a professional graphic designer with a focus on printing. So I'm somewhat familiar with paper types, their uses, and the process of printing overall. That's my disclaimer. Anyway, when you compare the first run of the first three volumes with the reprints or any subsequent volumes sans the final volume, you'll notice that volumes four through nine feature a thinner paper with a lighter stock that is somewhat transparent. I don't think it matters majorly, but it definitely is a cost cutting measure, probably due in some part to the idea of keeping the price points very similar. The original run cost about 3,500 yen each roughly, and the newer ones cost around the same or a little cheaper. The format didn't change for the first nine volumes, so at least there's consistency among those nine books. And though I wish we did get new art for each cover as promised, I can't really hate the collages. We don't know why Kaneko didn't contribute new art for this, but it does kind of suck. But whereas we at least got collages for the other books, for volume 10, we just get a tiny Jack Frost. And the way I kind of took that was Jack Frost saying, uh, goodbye, thanks for the memories. You know, that kind of situation, which is kind of fitting. But on the other hand, it does feel pretty lazy. Now going through this book is where I felt the most at odds. It's by far the skinniest book in the series at a mere 116 pages with about 94 pages featuring art or content. Compared to volume 1, which featured 272 pages, volume 3, which featured 208 pages, and the only other volume that even comes close to that thin paper size would be volume 8, which had 136 pages. The pages are restricted to the amount of commentary per piece, as well as the amount of art that can be featured for each entry. That's pretty much why volume 8 has Persona 1, Persona 2 Innocent Sin, and Persona 2 Internal Punishment all in one book. And that's also why Volume 3 has Nocturne, SMT 1, 2, and IF PS1 art, and the SMT 9 art. There just has to be enough art to facilitate the amount of pages given in the book. So, does that mean that Volume 10 just didn't have a large enough pool of art to draw from? Well, no. Volume 10 is the game cover art, the instruction manual cover arts, and uh, some promo art. Weirdly, it doesn't feature any Soul Hackers art. It's missing quite a few promo pieces from work like Digital Devil Saga. It lacks anything from the NES and SNES era of Kaneko's art, and it doesn't feature any of his non-Atlas work. Now, the non-Atlas work thing could easily be written off because maybe they didn't have the rights to those art pieces, but suffice to say that doesn't excuse all of the art that is not included in this volume that very well could have been. Though in saying that, much of that art could be stuff that maybe, again, they don't have access to because they don't have the rights to it. But seeing as the Soijima art books do include art that was used in promotion for PlayStation Magazine or other magazines, I think that it's safe to say that that stuff could have been included in this one. And even more, I think this book could have been easily the largest in the series. I can go through entry to entry of each Mega Ten title that's just not being represented in totality here, but, but that's kind of a bit much to go through in this video. So the length is just the way it is for no real reason that I can understand or tell. So I guess you're saying, is that the worst thing then? No. In addition to this, ConocoWorks 10 features no commentary or no details about the pieces. It's bizarre to not mention where the piece is from outside of the game, let alone its release date. I for one love knowing the titles of the art pieces. Sometimes they add a lot more meaning to the works themselves. For example, Nocturne's birth and death are pieces that are enhanced by the names of the art. Another example would be Persona's Behind the Mask. That isn't to say that all art from Kaneko has names, some of it's pretty straightforward, like cover art for the Nocturne box art, but we don't get that. We don't even get the names of the art pieces or the dates, and that frustrates me because this is information that I'm sure Atlas has access to. Surely people name the art or the assets in a way that are easy to access. Commentary makes sense to leave out, 
I'm sure Nobuaki Kenbei didn't really have a lot of meaningful discussion to be had with this art, but I think fans were mostly hoping for Kaneko to come back for a final interview maybe, or maybe he can discuss some of the art pieces, maybe say something summarizing his time at Alice or his experiences with the art. It's also not an expectation, but something that would have been very satisfying to his fans. Which are the people that are buying these books? The biggest grievance I have with Volume 10 is the formatting of the art and the presentation. The general idea is that the art is taking up as big of a presence on the page as possible. And although that may be the case, it's not really a consistent idea throughout the book. Partly because the art itself wasn't made in consistent sizes. But another reason I think is because of general incompetence. Take this Rido art. It's so big that it bleeds into the other page. That's the case for most if not all the art here. But by simply shrinking down the art slightly, it would then fit onto one page and then you have another page open to add more art. Part of why I think they even bothered to do it this way is because by bleeding over to the next page, then the book would be a lot bigger. Because in fact, if you did what I'm suggesting and actually made the art pieces small enough to fit on a page when applicable, the art book would be less than half the size that it is currently. And when you compare the way that they butchered the art in this sense, to how they initially wanted to do this thing that took longer to do in order to maintain color accuracy for the art, it just seems like they fell very far from grace. So look at this Nocturne cover art. So you know how I said that most of the art is big enough so that it reaches all the way to the edges of the page? Well for some reason, some of the art does that and also ends at the end of the page, but some art has a gap of color between the art and the end of the page. So. Looking at the Nocturne cover art page, this is actually the case. For some reason, it doesn't really extend all the way to the end of the page. I don't really know why. So like I was saying, it could be a thing where they're trying to get it to run off to the next page in order to beef up the volume of the book. Or it could be this. Because when you make an art book like this, where everything is running to the end of the page, that means that the book was likely printed larger than it was and cut down to size. So when you're manufacturing a book like this, or printing any kind of thing that goes to the edges of the page, the graphic designer has to allow room for something called bleed. This is where the lines of the paper will be cut in order to match the appropriate size. So for instance, if you wanted to print something that was eight and a half by 11 standard printer paper in America, and you wanted the whole page to be completely filled with the art, you wouldn't be able to print it at eight and a half by 11. What you would actually have to do is print it on a bigger piece of paper, let's say 11 by 17. You'd make the art bigger than the actual page size, usually by an inch so you can cut it down. And then you either lose some of the art and then you lose some of the art, but the page is completely full. Now, another alternative to this would be to add a color to the backing of the art, which the pages often do. Usually the art color is black, sometimes it's purple or whatever else in order to fit the theming of the art or the dominant color of the art. And I think that that's kind of what they might have used for the bleed edge. And this might explain why sometimes the art doesn't go all the way to the edge of the paper and instead just has a small gap. Maybe it was measured incorrectly. Whatever the case may be, their desire to do it this way has resulted in some art being cropped. So even though it's an art book, we aren't getting the full art pieces. Now, this isn't the case for all of the art in the art book, but it's the case for some of the ones that I'm gonna talk about now. The ones that were most noticeable to me were Death, where Lucifer is once again cropped out, and Devil Hearts, which is a long piece, which has the top and bottom cropped as well. Why do they do this? I have no idea. I know that Death is a particularly unusual size as it's pretty tall, taller than the average standard promotional poster art size, which would be B2, which is pretty much what Kaneko generally worked with. If for some reason it's just a little longer, Devil Hearts is another one that's very unusual in that it's very long. There's a couple other Kaneko art pieces that are like this, and this kind of leads to the next part that I want to talk about. There is a lot of bizarre spacing. Dead space, I would say, because for instance, above Devil Hearts is just big empty white paper. They could have used this space to add the title, the year, the commentary for that piece, but they don't. It's just empty. And then there's the more egregious problem where sometimes they just printed it in color and that just wastes a lot of ink. I don't think that it was necessary to make the colors match. I think that these all black pages or all red pages or even all lavender or purple pages 
are just a waste of paper slash ink because it's pretty expensive to print black in particular and I just don't understand why they did it that way. Like I was saying, I think that this is one of those things where they wanted to make the book as beefy as possible and having all this dead space would facilitate that, but it's pretty bad and it's a disservice to the fans. And like I said, they could have utilized the space in the way that I said. They could have put a title there, they could have put the year, they could have put a description, they could have put commentary. Anything like that would have been a lot better than just having blank space and art without any context because the context is part of what enhances the work when you look at the previous books and you see the demons you go oh that's a nice demon and then you look down and you see the demon name and you go oh i know what demon this is now it is jack frost and you know you could flip to the back and you could read about jack frost and maybe you might get a little tidbit about why he's designed the way he is now volume 10 isn't all bad a long time goal was to reward those who collected all 10 books and snip the little reward slips off and mail them in. And that reward was announced with this final volume. If you buy this volume new, it features a printout that explains how to do it, where to send things, and they mentioned what the reward is. The reward is actually pretty cool. It's art prints for the volumes 1 through 3 art, which is one of the other highlights in this book because in this book, you actually can see the full versions of those art pieces, which for nearly 17 years, some of this stuff was just unseeable. You just could not know what the rest of the art looked like because it was never published anywhere, ever. But this book allowed for you to actually see that, which is kind of nice. And when you see the three pieces and you put them side by side, you do in fact notice that they do blend together smoothly. So again, not too long ago, I did make a video about Kaneko's last big interview what it meant for Atlas and for me personally, and I ended that video with a lot of optimism. This series of books, and particularly the final one, felt more like an attack on Kaneko's legacy. It felt like a slap in the face to fans who wanted these expensive art books. The decline in quality from volumes one through three into volumes four through nine as well as the terrible mismanagement of volume 10 with no explanation as to why it's this way. That just feels like spitting on Kaneko's grave. I am so passionate about this book. When I first saw this announced, I was so excited and having this finality, this closure, but now I'm sad because it didn't have to be this way. I get it, maybe I'm just being a little bit egotistical or maybe I'm expecting too much. I couldn't tell you, but I can tell you this, I can't recommend Volume 10. If you like Kaneko's work, there's plenty other ways you can get his art. The Pandemonium series of art books, the Digital Devil Apocalypse book, but not this. That's it for the video. Goodbye, fellow Megatennis. So things haven't all been doom and gloom though. I did adopt a cat whose name is Pascal and he's been taking up most of my time. Outside of that, <laughs> The other big thing that I've been doing is I've been working out. I've been doing a lot of like self-care stuff. So I haven't really been making videos at the same frequency as I used to be. You guys might know that I've been making videos about a week, about a video a week for about a year. And I'm kind of coming off of that. Now I've been focusing on just making sure the content is better. My big focus going forward is going to be quality over quantity. So videos are going to come a little slower. I also recently opened up membership for my channel. This will go towards me buying better equipment. This will also go to me buying things that will go towards the creation of videos, including research materials. And overall, this is just a way to support me because, you know, small channel, but my, my stuff that I want to do is very, very niche and not very much done outside of maybe Kid Capes' videos. So if you guys want to become a channel member, you can do that. Um, so goodbye, fellow Mega Tennis, from me and Widow Pascal. Look at him. I'm going to probably put Pascal's theme right here. He's just a real baby. Just a real baby. Just a real baby. You're just a real baby.